Today we're visiting one of the coolest places in the Pacific Northwest, the Astoria Column. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures, this is Steve. Right now I'm in Astoria, Oregon, and that's the mighty Columbia River behind me. We've come to the place where you can get some of the best views of the Columbia, and quite frankly, in my opinion, I think one of the coolest places in the area, and that is the Astoria Column. So let's head over, check out the column, we'll climb to the top, and we'll talk about its history. Astoria is located on the south shore of the Columbia River in the northwest corner of Oregon. It was founded in 1811, making it the oldest city in Oregon and the first permanent American settlement west of the Rocky Mountains. Here's a look at the view from up here. Astoria also holds a special place in my heart as my grandparents on my mom's side both grew up in this area, met, and were married in Astoria. And this is a place they would have visited often in their youth. And right in front of us, this is a monument to Chief Comcomaly. Chief Comcomaly was one of the chiefs of the Chinook tribe at the time of Lewis and Clark's expedition to the area in 1805. This is a replica of his burial canoe that was placed here to honor him in 1961. But this is what we came up here to see today. Anytime I see a video about Astoria, I'm always surprised when the Astoria column isn't featured. I know the town has become famous for its film locations, but every time I've come to Astoria, visiting the column has been a highlight. Originally, the town wanted to build a rival to the Eiffel Tower on this hill, but that idea suffered from a lack of funding, especially after much of the town burned in a fire in 1922. In 1925, Ralph Budd, who was president of the Great Northern Railway, had the idea to build 12 historical monuments between St. Paul, Minnesota and Astoria, with Astoria to be the crowning monument. Budd's original vision for this monument was a giant flagpole with an enormous American flag. But when he told his idea to the New York architect Electus Lickfield, the architect suggested a column pattern after Trajan's Column in Rome, with a histogram commemorating events in the region's history, from Lewis and Clark's expedition to the completion of the railroad. And like Trajan's Column in Rome, there is a staircase inside where we could climb to the top. So let's head inside. And here's a look up. There are 164 steps in here. Construction began on the column in January 1926 and it was built quickly, with it being dedicated on July 22, 1926. Vincent Astor, the great-grandson of John Jacob Astor and son of John Jacob Astor IV, who died in the sinking of the Titanic, was one of the people who helped finance its construction. The histogram on the outside wasn't completed until October 1926, though. There's a bit of a traffic jam on the steps here, so here's a look back down. And here's a look up. And 164 steps later, here we are. So after a bit of a climb, we've made it to the top. So let's take a look at some of the great views we can get from up here. But also at the gift shop, you can buy little airplanes. And so let's toss one of these off. Oh wow, straight down. Wait, it's making a recovery. Wow, it's going a lot farther than it looked like it was going to originally. It looks like it's gonna cross that road. I lost the plane, but wow, what a view from up here. There's the city of Astoria below us, and of course the Columbia River. Because of the great views up here, 
During World War II, the Navy took control of the column to use it as a navigational air facility. If you're wondering how big the viewing platform is up here, it's not that big. At the top of the column are the names of some of the important people in Astoria's history, Lewis and Clark, John Jacob Astor, and Robert Gray. By 1968, cracks were visible on the column, and when they x-rayed it in the 1970s, they found it was only held together by wire mesh. So it was temporarily closed and reinforced with metal rings and steel rods. There was major restoration done in the 1990s as well, which restored the histogram on the outside that had been badly damaged by weather and previous attempts to protect it that ended up doing more harm than good. So we've made it back down to the bottom, and honestly, coming down was a little scarier than going up, but still, it was a really fun experience going to the top. But that's our look at the historic Astoria Column. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.